Hi everyone, Brianna Dignard here and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. For the month of March, I am doing something where I dress inspired like women scientists every single day. So that's 31 days of women scientist history fashion, I guess. And what this means is every single day I've been posting a short or a reel for the YouTube and Instagram respectively of an outfit I put together inspired by a different women scientist and highlighting a little bit of their accomplishments. And then every single Tuesday of March, I'm posting a full length video that is kind of a crafting video of some of the outfits that I'll be making or that I've made this month for said endeavor, along with even more information about those women scientists the outfits are based on. So today's outfit is inspired by Mary Awning, who is a paleontologist. And I've already done the video about her on this channel. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch that. It'll tell you a lot of information about her life but I thought today would be the perfect time to dive into something a little deeper that she studied, which was dinosaur poop or coprolites. And I also thought it would be fun to show some sewing montage of me putting together the all-star of today's outfit, which is an adorable dinosaur dress. So what better than some sewing content of a dinosaur dress mixed with a voiceover about dinosaur poop? I know, there's nothing better than that. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So since this is a sewing video and a science video, I thought I'd start off by showing the materials and pattern I end up using so you just have a little bit of foundation work for the sewing footage you end up seeing. So I went to Joann's and found this really adorable dinosaur fabric that was super bright, super beautiful, and I was like, yes, I need to make a dress out of this. And then I had this pattern already, and um, so I decided to use this pattern. And I did went with B, except I literally did not understand the instructions for what kind of trim it wanted. So it's basically B with no trim, because um, I couldn't figure it out and didn't have the energy to figure it out. So this pat, this fabric with this B pattern right here makes an adorable dinosaur dress, which you'll see at the end of this video. And also, if you can just go ahead and watch whoop, the reel <laughs> or the short I posted that shows you the outfit too, without me talking a bunch. So I decided to give a little bit of a background on Mary Awning before I launched into the sewing content with dinosaur poop montage, just to catch everybody up if you haven't watched my other video. So Mary Awning was a English scientist born in 1799 on the coast of England that is actually called Jurassic Coast for its abundance of fossils that are found there. And from a very young age, she accompanied her father on fossil trips in these very treacherous cliffs. And eventually after her father passed away, took up fossil collecting and fossil selling to tourists that would visit her hometown as a means of supporting her family. And she managed to find several like very large uh, fossil specimens that had never see been seen before by anybody. So these are like the plesiosaur, the ichthyosaurus. There's another one who I can't, whose name I can't remember, but it was a, like the first uh, oh, pterosaur, the first pterosaur skeleton found outside of Germany. She found a lot of really big skeletons that she was able to sell um, to museums and collections to the delight of geologists and other paleontologists at the time that were absolutely baffled by her discoveries because nobody had ever seen those animals on the planet before. And this is a time that the theory of extinction wasn't really around. People didn't believe that animals could go extinct. And so when animals started popping up that they had never seen before, they started to challenge the scientific ideas at the time and support the idea or the proposed theory at the time that animals could go extinct or no longer be found on the planet. So her work was instrumental in setting up paleontology and geology as legitimate sciences in proving that animals could go extinct and that were, there were prehistoric beasts that had once existed on the planet that no longer existed today. So that's just a little bit of some highlights of what she did and what she contributed to the fields of paleontology and geology for a much more comprehensive kind of story of her life. Again, go check out my other video I've made. And now let's go get into some sewing and to, to ooh, let's get into some sewing and into some dinosaur poop content. Woohoo! Hello everyone, it is voiceover Brianna holding up the top of my dress and looking very excited. And who is ready to talk about some dinosaur poop? I know I am. So dinosaur poop or uh, uh, fossilized feces are also called coprolites, C-O-P-R-O-L-I-T-E. And these were one of the things that Mary Awning studied. So this all started back off 
or mm, back when in the Christmas of 1826, one of Mary Anning geologist friends, William Buckland, who was among kind of her geologist friends who were rich and high up in society and tried to help her also get the credit she needed for her work. Her, William Buckland went and visited Mary Anning, and he had been really into the study of coprology, or the study of fossilized feces. So he had studied like some hyena feces that he had found, and was really getting into kind of this study. And prior to this, Mary had actually been discovering these small pebble-like objects for years um, across her tr treks across the cliffs. And they were twisted, they could be shaped like cones, spiral cylinders, and she often would find these fossils inside of larger finds like her ichthyosaurus or next to those skeletons. Mary was pretty sure that the reason they were shaped strangely or had like a twisted kind of marking on them was from going through the intestines of prehistoric beasts. And otherwise, she had found undigested food and poop that had been fossilized. So after consulting with Mary Onning and another geologist whose name was Gideon Mantell, William Buckland did in fact conclude that they were coprolites, they were fossilized poop. And now this became a tremendous breakthrough for paleontology at the time because now scientists could actually find out what the prehistoric animals were eating. So coprolites dinosaur poop were considered trace fossils because it wasn't a fossil of the actual creature. It wasn't a fossil of an ichthyosaurus or a plesiosaur. It was a fossil of something they had potentially left behind. So Mary Onning and William Buckland reconstituted those fossilized poops, which I'm sure did not smell very good. And they used those to figure out what was inside of them. This can include stuff like fish, other bone fragments, teeth of other animals, backbones, vertebrae, and this meant they knew what type of prey that the animal had eaten. And if they also found stuff like plant material, they knew that animal was more likely to be a herbivore or some, an animal that only ate plants. If they found, you know, bone fragments, teeth, they knew it was could possibly be a carnivore, it only ate meat. If they found fragments of plant material and animal material, it was most likely an omnivore, meaning it ate both plants and animals. The proximity to larger skeletons, so like if you found a coprolite next to a giant ichthyosaurus skeleton, often gave insight into who pooped out that fossil. So if it was near an ichthyosaurus, that poop might have come from an ichthyosaurus. Um, and not only could the contents of the uh, contents of this dinosaur poop be a clue, you know, these plant materials or bone fragments, but the shape also is very indicative of the creature it originated from. So sharks actually have spiral intestines, which is a bonus fun fact. So a spiral shaped coprolite was likely to come from a shark. Not only did the discovery of coprolites increase the understanding of these prehistoric creatures and what they ate, but it also helped scientists learn how fossils formed. They didn't think that up until then they weren't sure like it, what type of things would necessarily form fossils. They thought only really hard solid bones could form fossils, but obviously poop is soft, but it was still able to fossilize. And this is because any soft tissue would get buried by mud or some other type of sediment and cut off its access to oxygen. Without any oxygen, you have a stop or a slow in your normal decomposition process. And this allows fossilization or the replacement of tissue with bone to happen. All right, hopefully you had as much fun watching me sew and listening to um, me talk about dinosaur poop as I had sewing the dress and learning about dinosaur poop so I could share that information with you. So let's go ahead and see how that beautiful dress turned out. Okay, the dinosaur dress is all finished. Um, I love it and I love this flower crown that goes along with it. I'm gonna make a video later that goes through this process, but this is the finished Mary Awning outfit for the day, if you haven't seen this short. And oh, I just think it's so cute. I feel like you go through a dinosaur phase when you're a little kid and then you grow up. You kind of re-enter a dinosaur phase. Like I see little kids with dinosaur clothes on and I'm like, oh, you're so cool. Why don't I have those dinosaur clothes? Well, bam, now I do. Um, I had a lot of fun learning about coprology, dinosaur poop, and I hope you guys did as well. 
So today's fun fact that we're going to rate is that coprology was actually used to determine that the T-Rex was a carnivore. So thank you, T-Rex poop, I guess. <laughs> so be sure to rate that fun fact on a scale of one to 10 in the comments below. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Remember to stay tuned for the rest of the month of March. I will be posting content every single day with the longer format content on Tuesdays. And follow me on Instagram. I think I got everything. And please remember to always keep it sciencey.